Hey everyone, Jamie Pate here, and I have just recently done a post for the Heidi Swap blog, and it was a Mink at Monday post, and I was building in that post a mink swatch book, what I call a mink swatch book. I've been wanting to do this for a long time, and finally I thought it would be a great way to kind of show off the new mink colors that came out this year, as well as to show off some techniques that I've been playing with and things. So first of all, I'm just gonna pull out here this amazing selection of foils. And you can see here, this, these are some beautiful vibrant colors. So we have mink, I'm sorry, we have pool, honeycomb, silver star, iridescent teal, iridescent lime, iridescent ultraviolet. Beautiful colors, right? I'm not a huge color girl, and that's another reason I wanted to play around with these colors and see what I could come up with in terms of the swatch book. So I introduced to you a couple videos back this surface paper pad. Inside the surface paper pad, one of the things you're gonna find is this black paper, which is a toner paper. And so anything, any kind of foil, that you place on this surface and you run it through the machine, it's gonna foil that completely. But what I did this time is I took this, it's about a one and a half inch size circle punch. And I just took my toner paper and I went to work in just making the first page of my swatch book. And this is how that turned out. Isn't that cool? I mean, I just all these colors together, even that just really inspires a person to think, okay, number one, the circle punches could be great embellishments on a page. Number two, these colors go together so beautifully, you could really mix and match them. And it's not like the whole page just says foil, right? So I thought that was a lot of fun. And I think that's why it's important to make swatch books of different, I don't know if you want to do it of a collection. I, Vicki Booten really inspired me because she's doing it with her texture paste and she made it a swatch book with her texture paste. I thought that was super cool. So it inspired me to, let me try it with mink. So it started off with this first page. Okay, let me show you what else I have got going here. Okay, another way I was inspired recently was with something that Tim Holtz did. And he put together like this little file folder of pre-cut swatches of foil. I really love this idea when I saw it. You know, sometimes you're like, that's just like the simplest thing. I wonder why I couldn't have thought it thought of it, and but I didn't. So I love to um, watch creatives and how they do things. And so I just cut up many swatches of these new foils and place them in here. So they're just ready to go as I build the swatch book. Okay, the next technique I wanna add to my swatch book is of course stamping. We've seen the new technique that Tim Holtz has made famous around the world with the toner ink, with the Heidi Swap toner ink. So I have my toner ink. I have my handy dandy little brayer. I have a cup that I'm gonna to use to pour out on my craft mat that I have also. I have a selection of stamps here and I have this great cardstock, super smooth white cardstock. Another thing that works really great are manila tags and I'll link those below as well. If you haven't seen Tim Holtz technique for using the brayer with the toner ink, then check out Heidi Swap's IGTV because you're gonna wanna check that out. Also on her IGTV, she has additional videos that show how to use this toner ink as well. So I'm gonna speed this up and just you can just watch as I get a couple of these cards ready because I wanna have a card for each of the colors because I wanna see how the colors play with the stamp ink. Um, and the different stamps. So here we go.
Okay, so after I stamped all these, you probably noticed that I set them up here on the mink machine. It's just a clever way to help them dry. Got that from Heidi. And so these are, and they don't have to dry necessarily, but like you can tell on this butterfly, it got a little smoochy. So there are some parts on there that do need to dry. Otherwise, everything dries pretty quick. And so I'm just going to go through now and just using the classic foil method. Nothing fancy about this, but if you're brand new to foiling, this is what we're going to do. You have to have a carrier folder. I've cut this one down, but they also come this size too in the mink starter kit. And I'm going to place my image face up right there with the foil on top. And so the foil is face up also. Okay. And yes, you can see I've used a part of this before and I'm going to use this part again. Make sure all of it's covered and run it through the machine on a four when you're using the toner ink. So I'm just going to let that heat up to four. And I know I'm heated up when my red blinking light turns to green. Okay, so I have run all of these through the machine. There is pool on that floral stamp. There is the, oh, what was it called? I can't remember. The gold, oh, it's honeycomb. It's a gold. It's got a honeycomb pattern in it with that sort of Baroque flourish, flourish there. And I thought this was pretty cool. I wasn't sure about doing the silver stars on the butterflies, but it's really cool. I really like how that turned out. And then here is the iridescent teal with that newsprint. So super subtle, but gorgeous. And again, with the iridescent lime and this larger Baroque kind of flourish. I love it. I think these are beautiful and I can't wait to add these to my swatch book. And I just want to show you the reveal here with this iridescent, with the iridescent ultraviolet with that butterfly. Gorgeous, striking. That color is just so bold, right? There it goes. Another addition to my swatch book. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to try then, I love texture paste and I love the mink texture paste and how uh, beautiful it goes through any kind of stencil. This here, I just use an assortment of stencils. This was the Art Walk stencils that are soon available. Um, this is a scrapbook.com exclusive stencil here, this honeycomb and this heart. And then this is a Tim Holtz stencil. I'm not even sure if you can see these. Pretty subtle. This one still needs, I feel like needs to dry a little bit more. It's a little tacky. So kind of watch for that when you are using a texture paste. It has sort of a plasticky kind of feel already. So it's going to kind of naturally feel a little kind of tacky. You don't want it too tacky that it's just going to smush when you put it through the machine. But I'm going to go ahead and work on these and then show you what that addition looks like to the swatch book. The last textured swatch is going through right now. But this is what I have so far. These hearts with the lime and the honeycomb with the teal. The silver stars is throughout this quote here and the honeycomb gold is on the dot. And then this was the pool that was on this. I don't, I'm not even going to try and say that design because I don't know the name of that design. And then let's take a look here at what this floral tag stencil did. Oh my gosh, that was so beautiful. That is so rich. I love that. Oh, there's just something put possibilities that are here with these swatches. So they get added to the book, but I'm going to tell you right now, I'm pretty sure some of these are going to find their way in a project or two because they're just so cool. <laughs> okay. What I want to do next. Okay. So you can see I have all these butterflies cut out here on the mat. Remember in the beginning, I talked to you about the surface pad. One of the surfaces in the surface pad is this glue paper. You can see I've already punched up some smaller butterflies here, but it has a layer of glue all on the top of the surface of that paper. So I punch these out with my die cutting machine. And we're gonna try something here in real time. Remember all our off cuts that we, off cuts? What could we call these? Off foils that we used earlier? I was thinking of what it would look like with the glue and putting that other pattern over the top of it. Now, the other thing I think we might wanna be mindful of is, no, I think I think everything's covered. Let, let's let's see what happens. Okay, I have another one that started in the machine, but let's see how this turned out. It's a little sticky coming up. You, we're learning this together in real time here, because you know these white parts here are gluey. <laughs> That's my term, gluey. But 
If you're patient enough to pull off the top of that foil, you're gonna have a pretty cool pattern left. And it didn't seem to damage the paper. That could make for a fun embellishment. So if you don't mind some of the irreg irregularities in it, that is a really fun element. And I'm gonna add this to a card for my swatch book as well. Let's see what happened with this one. It's gonna do the same thing. It's gonna be sticky on those open parts. So I suggest kind of peeling it away. And it does come off, it's just a little resistant. And I wonder if maybe instead of the four, I could have run this on a three. I bet so, okay. That butterfly is super cool because you can see the kind of the grungy graphic still in it. All right, I'm loving that right there. That is great. Okay, we're gonna finish the rest of these. Okay, would you look at that? That is pretty beautiful. That was that large Baroque kind of stamp, flourish stamp. So super happy with how all these turned out. And this is a great and fun technique to use with the glue surface pad. And there's two more of those. That was that honeycomb. So just a real subtle pattern on that one. And then there is the, uh, which one was, I keep forgetting the name of this one, ultraviolet. Why I can't remember that, I don't know. And then this one's gonna go right here on top. So. For now, that will be the additions that I'm going to make to my swatch book. I'm pretty happy with what I have started so far. I love having these new colors out and being able to look at how all these colors play with these stamp images. And then the texture paste. And plus, just remind me of, this is also a great way to remind you of what text or what stencils that you have on hand as well. And then, this was a fun surprise that we both discovered together. So I encourage you to, to make your own mink swatch book, add to it, come up with ideas and techniques, I'm even trying to figure out a way to make this work still. I'm gonna, I'll figure it out though. Thank you so much for watching. All the supplies are linked below. I'd love for you to punch that subscribe button. I'd love to have you follow along in this community and I'll see you next time. Thanks again.